What's up everybody, it's Amar. Today and today's topic is I'm going to be talking about my time at Swirl Studios. Now, Swirl Studios for me was um, a great experience for me. It taught me a lot about the film industry and how you move yourself up in the film industry. Um, we saw two sound stages and in those two sound stages, they have a ton of sets. We saw the warehouse where they store wood to make wood boards and stuff, you know, to help support like beams and stuff or, um, you know, like sets and stuff and and all cool stuff like that. Um, we um, heard some of the movies they're making, like they're making um, with, they've been hired recently to do um, a documentary about MLK for BET and that's something really cool and um, I just want to share you this experience and kind of see how um, how you guys think about this experience now um, it started about 10 30 in the morning we got there it was really um, you know it, it was it, it was okay. it was quiet when we first got there you know because it's early um, it's early for some people it's early for, it's not early for us because we've been up for about some of us have been out for about like four or five hours now and um, we got on the bus, we got there, it was like two, three minutes away from our school that we go to. And um, it it take barely any time at all. We got in there, we met up with our um, tour guide for the day who just so happens to be the guy who does all the marketing for the studios in order to let um, big channels and companies know who want to hire that studio to help them with the project. Um, he's responsible for the marketing of that to tell them that they're there because it's not in a very um very all open area it's on a highway so you have to have yourself well promoted if you're going to be in an area to where you can easily be seen but um when we got there he talked to us about the business he started out um where where you know where when he met the the owner of the place and you know the the ceo he he um he taught us uh, about all that stuff. He told us his entire story of how he came to get there too, integrated into it. Then um, he talked about how in order for you to be able to get into the film industry, it's all about the people you know. Therefore, the more internships you do, the more people who want to um, hire you because of your experience, not just in school or um, by a degree you have, also by real life, film experience that helps you on a long to where when you go full blast into the film industry you'll be like hey, I got this I can do this and this and this and not have to worry about an issue about it that's what it was all about there um, and it was a really fun it was a really cool experience um, I have to say though um, it was really fun so um, after we, we left there we um, <laughs> we went down to Douglasville and Georgia and um, we, we went to the Chick-fil-A there. Um, they told us, okay, you have an hour for lunch. You can go anywhere in this area. There was a Wendy's. Then then like right across from that, there was um, a Waffle House. Then behind there was Chick-fil-A. The majority of us went to Chick-fil-A. A few people went to Waffle House. Two teachers that were with us went to Waffle House. And then um, this one, this one kid in my class, he went down to Wendy's and got himself some food there. Um, out of all of those three, I believe Chick-fil-A is the best. I'm not the biggest Wendy's fan, and um, I don't like eating Waffle House outside of waffles for breakfast because I'm not really a big fan of Waffle House. They have like lunch and dinner options, but they're just not all that fantastic, and I didn't find them to be very enjoyable while, while I was there. But, um, but, but anyway though, um, we went there, then after that, me and my friend were like, okay, everybody done eating, we're out. So we we walked around for a little bit, we caught up with, with our friends they, as they were coming out of Waffle House. Then we went down to Waffle House and said hi to my friend. My friend was like, hey, we're, we're in the neighborhood and we just wanna say hi. My teacher said, you're in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. I'm like, yep, yep, that's all right. And, and so we um, we bugged her for like a minute or two. Then we left and we went down to Walgreens. My friend got um, some Haribo Twin Snakes and what I got was some um, chocolate covered cookie dough bites. You don't understand how good that is. That's like my favorite candy of all time. Only because it's chocolate chip cookie dough bites that are covered in milk chocolate 
and um, you can't get these anywhere else. You can only find them in certain places around Georgia. You get them at like Walmart or like Walgreens, for instance, because that's where we I got them. And um, the entire day I spent about nine dollars and eighty six cents because when I went to Chick Fil A, I got um. A spicy chicken sandwich deluxe. It comes with lettuce, tomato, pepper, that cheese, and a spicy chicken patty um, with with two bu buttered pieces of bread. One time I even got one where it didn't have bread at all. Um, I was a little upset about it, but a good thing we had some leftover hamburger buns and all. We were able to salvage a uh, top bun off of that and put it on top of my burger, my sandwich. Um, but anyway, back to the main story. I got some medium fries and a medium drink. That came up to a total about 808. Yes, it was exactly eight dollars and eight cents, and um, for for that food I got, it, it was very cheap for me considering how I was only by myself. I wasn't, you know, paying for like two or three people, or um, a family member wasn't paying for several people. It was only one person, and that was me. So um, I had a good time there. Then when we went down to Walgreens, I spent a dollar seventy four, and um, my mother gave me ten bucks for me to spend while I was out today, yesterday. And um, I <laughs> I spent nine dollars and eighty six cents out of that ten dollars that I spent. It was incredible that I saved that much money because I didn't think I was going to save that much money, and that, that was pretty incredible. Then um, we got back to school. We went down to my third block teacher's house. Some my third block teacher's class. I mean, I don't know why I said house. Anyway, we got out of school. We went to my third block teacher's um, classroom. We dropped off our stuff for those who want to drop off their stuff. Then we went down to um, this college thing our principal was doing for, um, you know, kind of promote kids. Like, yeah, I want to go to college. Ooh, I want to go to college. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it was inspiring. It was inspiring for me at certain parts. Um, I've always known I want to go to college because I've always wanted to um, have the chance to be able, you know, to better myself and to um, put myself in a good position in life. And college is the one step I need towards being an editor for a major film or videography company down the road. So that way I believe most likely I'll be doing editing for a film studio rather than a videography studio. It's not their fault, it's my preference. But of all its fellows, I'll do videography, which is perfectly fine too. As long as I could get the job that I want inside, I'll be perfectly fine with that. Um, but yeah, that's how my day, my entire day went. If I, um, oh, oh, by the way, while we were in the in the sound stages, we um, we had several different sets set up. They did a BET like live event stage. It was it was in the center here. I'll, I'll insert clips in between me talking about all this cool stuff. Then um, we walked through what was like, um, it, it was like a hospital hallway. And see those brick walls? They're not actually brick. They look like brick, but it's just plasterboard with like, where it's like textured and then painted to look like actual pieces of brick. Um, it was really fun and the entire experience was really cool. It taught us a lot about the film industry and the way they like to do certain things there. Um, it, it really taught you a lot about the experience overall. And um, while, while we were there, um, there was this show called The White and Shining Armor. I don't know what, it's a, apparently a show where, where this kid like falls into a pond and he is like, um, transform to the medieval times he goes back in time to the medieval times and he could like swim through the pond and one end is the present and one end is the past and he could just go back and forth back and forth and um it, it's it's apparently a really cool show we ran into the um I, it was the executive producer of that show and um he had this to say about the um whole experience and how to get bigger in the film industry taking little movies and then you should put it on YouTube and let people see it. Because what happens is you, every time you do a shot and you go, yeah, that's good. Wait a minute, this is a better shot. 
wait a minute, this is even a better shot, <laughs> right? But you don't know until you try it. And then you gotta show it to your friends and see what they say. And then they critique you and they tell you what's good, what's not good. And then one day you come down here and you see this studio and you go, God, this is great. And Keith says, yeah, there's a show coming in next week and they're looking for PAs and people to work. Hey, can you throw my name in? And you go, sure, well, why would I wanna hire you? Well, here's the films I've done. Here's the little shorts I've done. Here's the scripts I've written. Here's what I'm doing to make myself a filmmaker. So whatever you do now is a step to do something later. Nobody does this by themselves. It's always somebody's give, got to give you a hand. So you know Keith now. Keith runs the studio. Send him a resume. Say, look, if ever I get out of school, I want to work in the film business. What can you do for me? And he'll write your name down and he'll, give, he'll pass it on to me or he'll pass it on to somebody else. But that's, that's how you start. That's how I started. Just knocking on doors, taking pictures. And I called a film school up and I said, if anybody does a film, I want to help. Nice. And I and a guy called me up and said, hey, I'm doing a little student film. Can you come help me? And I went out to his, his place. We did a film on the weekend. We just shot this little film. And I, I was there doing everything on the show for him. And then uh, about two years later, he called me up out of the blue and he said, hey, I got $150,000 and I'm going to do a movie. And I want you to work on it. And that was the beginning of my career because I worked on that movie. And I used that as a resume to get another job, and another job, and another job. So that's what you got to do. Where are you guys from? Hiram. Hiram High. Nice. Yeah, this is a big opportunity out here. A lot of shows. So knock on doors. Yeah. I'm Frank. Well, thank you. Thank you. And um, anyway, it was really cool. It was a really fun experience. I loved the entire thing. It taught me a lot about everything I needed to know about the film industry and how to move forward with that. I, I learned two things. You need to know a good amount of people. And the second is you gotta have business cards so that way if you're making little films and stuff and you wanna show people your films, you can just be like, here's my business card. Here you go, keep that. You could. You know, search me up on YouTube, Twitter, you know, all, all that good social media, you know. You know, just search me up there and it's, it's all good to go. <laughs> anyway, with that said, I will see you guys later. Like and subscribe. Do all of that good jazz. Do all of... Do all of that good jazz and I will see you guys later. Peace. I'm out. What up, guys? We're back with another B A N G R. We miss you.